Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Dr. Patrick Porter. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm so grateful to have you here today. We are going to talk about on Savvy Today how to reframe anxiety and channel into motivation and productivity. Very important as we talked very, very briefly before our chat here. So many people are dealing with anxiety the past year, as we all can relate. It's been a really stressful year and going into 2021, but it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, we can reframe, rechannel, and and get back to productivity and motivation. Um, and you're going to have us uh, show us some wonderful ways. You work with BrainTap. But before we go to sharing those wonderful tips with our audience, share a little bit about BrainTap. What is that all about? Well, BrainTap is a tool. It's a app and it's also a piece of hardware. We call it Peloton for the brain Ooh, because we have two pieces. So we can train the brain to wake up in the morning. We call it digital coffee. We have a reboot session. We can help to reclaim 80% of the uh, energy you have in the morning when you wake up. Uh, it's it's a product that uh, we have 2,300 clinics across the country using as part of their neuro care, but people can have it right in their home and they can try it out um, and see how that works. It, it lowers stress and anxiety along with the other things that it does. Wow. How did you come? Did you create it? Were, were you? The yes, I'm the inventor. Um, my dad was a seminar leader. He was, I, I like to tell people I was blessed to be the son of an alcoholic because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that way when I was younger, but because he got help, you know, he, he didn't, he, he basically found a solution and it was uh, technology driven meditation. And so he taught it to the whole family. And then we've we've increased upon that. I've been doing it actually. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this really my whole adult life. But even uh, back as far back as when I was twelve years old, we were doing this. So it's just been my life career and, and mission mm-hmm. to to help people realize that you have a powerful brain that can do a lot for you. It can lower these stresses and this anxiety, or it can take control of your life and feel like you, you're in the bus with Freddy Krueger driving. You know that's the that's the negative side effect of it. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We had someone on that last month that kind of talked about just changing sometimes the language can make a drastic difference on how you see the world, perceive the world and your outcome. And it's amazing how the negative self chatter that you might be going on and that you even forget is going on. That is kind of just yes. running on automatic pilot can just take your lives in disastrous places. Yeah. Well, science now shows us that when we think negative thoughts, we have to create the exact chemical corresponding reaction in the body because we're we're not just electrical we're 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 biochemical so in order to experience those feelings of anxiety stress and sadness we've got to develop those in fact uh, 5000 years ago when buddha said he who angers you conquers you <laughs> science is actually showing that's true because if you hold anger towards somebody or fear towards somebody or or stress it's <laughs> actually destroying you from the inside out your body is basically destroying itself wow so over time, you're actually, I, I didn't know that. Yes. See, I got yeah. that you could mess up your life, have disastrous re- results on, you know, maybe having a bad career or life, family life, but I didn't realize it could actually damage your, your body. Yeah. Well, we now know that actually every cell of your body is transmitting and receiving information, not just from your brain, but from the environment. We're interacting with our environment all the time. And they now know that uh, a thought can actually change our the way our genes express. So Mm -hmm. that means that we we can become more adaptive to stress or we can become more a victim of stress just by the way we think about it and talk to ourselves. So it's it's really important that we keep an optimistic kind of outlook. You know, if we look at everything as gloom and doom, then we we create that self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, and it's interesting because I, I I have heard of two individuals being in the same circumstance. One will have a much better attitude, and the other will not. And and one will be miserable, less healthy, and everything. Uh, one specific, we had a guest on several years ago who had uh, burned eighty percent of his body, and he was in uh, an accident in his building where he worked. And the other person in the bed next to him, same accident burned eighty percent, but he was really like, "Oh, this is awful. I'm never going to get over this. Never going to heal." He died. The other guy's like, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to get over it. And the doctors were like, wow, we can't believe it. I should have known that the body plays a big part with your mind, body, spirit, because he kicked it and he's, he's ruling today. He's very, very successful. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, part of the part of the optimistic mindset is not a Pollyanna approach, but it's basically looking that if you look at your past as a learning experience, what have we learned? And of course, we all make mistakes, but the problem is some people just keep making them, thinking that making that same mistake is going to get a different outcome. So within, within what we're doing, we can't change what we have to do like with COVID, what we're talking about here today. Hmm. But what we can do is change our interaction to it. We can get outside uh, when it's when it's appropriate. We can get out, get some sunlight. We can exercise. We can eat properly. We can start, uh, instead of getting up, rolling out of bed with our pajamas on and, and opening up our laptop and starting work, we can actually pretend that we're actually going to work, even though it's just in the other room if we're still working from home. Yeah. You know, a lot of our, our brain loves patterns. So if if we don't have the right patterns, now sometimes we get the negative patterns, right? So some people might want to stop stopping by and getting that donut on the way to work. And then when they make that commitment that it almost it's almost like some things happen and our car turns into the donut shop. And before we know it, we're eating one and we're going, I can't believe I'm eating this. Well, without knowing it, we plan that subconsciously. So we need to work at a deeper level to get these things done. And uh, our interaction with life is what's more important than what happens to us in life. I like to tell people mm. it's what happens through you, not what happens to you. It's how do you internalize it? So how is how is that affecting you? And we now know that something called psychoimmunology, which mm. means that our psychology actually affects our immune system. They know that now. We have a thinking immune system and it circulates. It's not just in one place in our body. It's actually in every cell of our body. So if we want to, in anxiety and stress, actually cause it to work less effectively. Yeah. So that's why, you know, when we look at somebody and uh, we think, oh, that person might have COVID. Well, we need to look at people and say, that person's healthy. They have a healthy, strong immune system. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that our body can heal it. Now, of course, if you're compromised with these these conditions, you don't want to go outside anyway, yeah. uh, because you, you might get in trouble. So, I mean, it, it's all about attitude and, and basically following through. Yeah, I love that because early on when the COVID thing happened, I was in New York City and everything was on lockdown except for one bakery. And man, was I a happy camper. I was like, bakery, mmm, cake. <laughs> so I was like, you know, one of those cartoons being led through the sky over to the bakery and I was getting pastry. Every, I mean, it was home cooked, fresh made, awesome yeah. bakery, but I was having it every day and now it became my new pattern of cake. Yes every mm -hmm. single day. And it made me happy, but fat very quickly. <laughs> and uh, I soon did not like the way I felt in my working environment because I felt really lethargic from all the sugar and, and not moving. Um, but I think about two months in, I found all these wonderful exercise things on YouTube and got jammed into it. And now, you know, it's become part of my now pattern where I do yes. it right after work. I just turn on that video, get going. I now have a slew of equipment I bought and I'm really enjoying it actually more than when I used to go to the gym. And of course it's a lot more, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Our body, our body wants to be used. In fact, for your brain exercise is one of the best things you can do because huh. sitting, they say sitting is the next, uh, is the new smoking because of how bad it is for your immune system and your circulatory system and your nervous system. So really? we want to get up and move and breathe. The reason we have such big brains compared to other animals is because uh -huh. we, stand up and we move. And of course, with computers, we've, we've changed that dynamic. Although yeah. I, I'm standing now and I, I stand 90% of the day because oh. I was sitting almost all day. You know, if I'm sitting working with a client, I'm sitting down in a chair. If I'm working at the computer, I'm sitting down. So now I've chosen uh -huh. to change that strategy because it wasn't fitting my health, mm -hmm. what I wanted for health in my body. Yeah. You know, what's interesting, Dr. Porter, is that I had a psychologist who decided, you know, sitting there talking to my patients, it wasn't the most effective way. So she started to add in her in her um, therapy that we would make it movement psychotherapy, where we would go for a walk and I give you psychotherapy. So that that way, my patients aren't just sitting in a chair. We're still getting I'm still helping them, but we're both moving. That's perfect and, because some yeah. people don't learn unless they're moving. They there's three styles of learning. They would say there's a lot more than this, but just to generalize it, there's yeah. visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So mm -hmm. our school systems are designed more for the visual learner and those kinesthetic people that are in their emotions and their feelings. If mm -hmm. you're just sitting there, they can't emote is what they say, mm -hmm. like in therapy. So while they're walking, they can get those moving and they can make those changes much easier. So that makes a lot of sense. I think that's a great strategy. 
Wow, I, I totally like that because it's interesting. I'm more of an auditory learner. I'm not a visual learner, so I, I school was hard for me. Right. Um, yeah, I, I was. Learned- I was. I tell people I was blessed to have uh, Sister Barbara. She liked me so much. I was in her class two years in a row. The because uh, I was held back in in second grade because I I couldn't learn very well. And then I found out I was an auditory learner. And as soon as I took the pressure off, and my dad taught me that how to do the auditory thing, uh, then. Yeah. I became an honor roll student. I could then you can learn the others. We all have this learning strategy, and and some people it's it's how do you how does your brain best digest and use information? Mm. And it's not all the same. We all have our own little strategies. Yeah, yeah, and and it really, you know, when you do have a public school where everyone comes together, you you can't have all different learning methods in one class. So right. they have one which is not everyone's fit to it. So if you can, like you said, mold yourself to fit better. I found for myself when I would go to college, I would not write stuff, I would just listen carefully and write key words. And I could go home and recall from memory all that that was said during the lecture because I, I can memorize it auditorily. Yeah. 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 No, that's perfect. I mean, if you're sitting there stressing about remembering it, you're going to remember the stress of trying to remember <laughs> than, than the information because you actually encode the information with the emotional state it was delivered. So they call these state dependent memories. So that's why testing is so difficult because if you learn, if you've never tested yourself and you get in a testing situation, the information isn't there, but those people that self test, you know, that quiz themselves. And there's a whole strategy. I have in uh, another book that I wrote called awaken the genius where we talk about uh, it's called, there's a, we have a whole section called student genius where we've taught kids in four hours. Kids can learn this the problem isn't the teachers. The, the problem is that they've not taught the kids how to do this, like mm-hmm. how to learn if they're auditory, kinesthetic, or visual. And then the children can, now you can't do it at an early age, but when they get old enough to realize that mm-hmm. third or fourth grade, you can start teaching them to ask questions. The biggest thing people miss out on is they don't ask enough questions. Mm-hmm. And that if you don't ask questions, you can build up that stress and anxiety because you might think, hey, I'm not that smart. Mm-hmm. We actually showed in our one of our studies that Uh, because we had students that were failing um, high school. And we asked them, do smart kids ask questions or do dumb kids ask questions? And they invariably said, all the dumb kids ask questions. So we had them take a pad of paper around for a week and they had to put a check mark next to everybody who asked the questions. They found out very quickly that all the smart kids were asking all the questions. So the smarter kids ask questions, not the dumb kids. And what was happening was the teachers were all teaching at the high level so the young, the, the kids that weren't catching up anyway, now we're being bombarded with these bigger questions. So what we taught them was they had to ask three questions in every class. Mm-hmm. And that made such a shift in their behavior in learning that now their brain was open to learn and, and retain that information. That is fabulous. I wish I'd known that in school because my idea was, oh, they're going to think this is a stupid question. So I'm not even going to ask it. So that's exactly what I was thinking. So right. most of the time I wouldn't ask questions. Wow. Yeah. That's great to know. Now, how does brain tap help? You had mentioned, isn't it kind of auditory meditation thing? Yeah, or how, yeah, how does it work? We, do is we, have, we have music, we have sound, and then we have guided imagery programs that take people there. And in fact, if, if people wanted to go, there's a site, braintap.pro, where they can actually, for 99 cents, get a copy of my book and get 15 days on the app so they can try it for themselves. Hmm. But we also have a headset. So that's why we call it Peloton for the brain. We have, just like they have the bicycle, we have a headset. And what it does, instead of you having to learn how to do this, Mm because a lot of people don't want to go to the mountains and learn how to meditate for 30 days or 30 years, I mean. (laughs) Uh, But if you can imagine the same feeling you have when you're sitting by the ocean or going to a mountaintop, Mm. our body uses something called frequency following response. Our nervous system is actually mirroring our environment. So when we're by the ocean, it's mirroring an environment called 10 uh, 10 hertz frequency, which is alpha, which is the meditative state. When we go to the mountains, it imitates a cycle 7.8, which imitates the theta state. So in both of these states, our brain creates neurotransmitters. One is called acetylcholine, one is called GABA. Those are the two that most people are missing. And if you have a high dose of those, you don't get anxious. You don't get stressed. Basically, think of it like you're inoculating yourself against this anxiety and stress disorders that people have. But when we measure people's brain, you know, when we put them in, a, when we do an EEG with them, we figure out where their brain's at. We find out that stressed out people have what's called high beta. High beta is where fear, frustration, and anxiety. It's also where cortisol, uh, all of the uh, stress hormones hang out. So our brain, our brain has these different states. And when we're now, if we're the difference between anxiety and excitement is very fine. 
right? The, 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 the feeling. So yeah. the brain can get confused and it might start liking the feeling of anxiety mm -hmm. because it's very much like the sensation of being anticipatory Ooh. in the brain. Our brain gets addicted. I mean, you, you might know somebody, Christina, that, that goes to the gym a lot. And when they, when the gym shut down, they were cranky. They were like drug addicts. Like they, they had to lift furniture and stuff because they were so, because they're getting, they're getting these brain chemical releases by lifting weights, right. Or, or these people that were out running and then they were told, Hey, you can't go out and run. You can't yeah. exercise. And they're like, what do you mean? They became addicted to those healthy habits and patterns yeah. the same yeah. way that somebody's doing negative habits and patterns do. So we need to pick our patterns. Like you said, once you realize that the Danishes were good, but maybe not every day, you yeah. know, the, then you got to break that pattern. The, the hard part is the brain is an energy. Basically it sucks up all our energy. About 25% of the energy of our system is used by our brain. So mm -hmm. when we try to change it, we have to exert even more energy and then we get tired. I mean, yeah. uh, people think it's hard to do a job, a manual labor job, which it is, but usually they can eat some carbohydrates and they're back in business. You know, mm -hmm. like thing, like I used to joke and say when I was working in for, for college, I had, mm -hmm. a, you know, of course I was working, uh, working my back and, you know, doing hard labor, yeah. but I could come home and have a beer or a, a, uh, some kind of sp spaghetti or something. I had energy, but mm -hmm. when I started doing brain work and working with my brain and trying to figure things out, that's, it's a, it's a whole different kind of food Tired. that our brain needs. Our, yeah. we need ketones actually. It's a whole difference in, in body. Our brain needs fats, not the bad wow. fats, not potato chips. Yeah. The good fat, fat, yeah, yeah. No, no potato chips and McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's interesting that when you mentioned that, um, we get addicted to, um, certain kinds of stresses, I was thinking about the news channel when, when COVID first came out, I know I, I was listening more to news cycles and whatever, and you just get sucked into this negative yeah. feedback and it's just like a circle and you it, it's almost like and I didn't realize this but I think you get addicted to wanting to go oh. back for more oh yeah you do because you're gonna you're afraid you're gonna miss out on something and mm. the the problem is they changed the whole story for us instead of just telling us what's happening now they're yeah. telling us what happened from the beginning of time yeah. so this it, it never looks like it's improving even if it is <laughs> and even though it is improving I mean uh the natural cycle of a virus is two years. So yeah. hopefully we'll see some improvement here. But, you know, if you go to the news, you won't see that because mm -hmm. what sells newspapers or gets viewership isn't a good news. I mean, I, I was actually on a, a TV channel in, in Tucson mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago when I was on a book tour and he started the po All Positive Network. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, well, what happened? He said, we couldn't get funding because nobody would watch it. You know, it's it's so crazy. Everybody wants their life to be like their social media channel. You know, it's always roses and there's, you know, there's no, but then when, if you go down the highway mm -hmm. and, and there's an accident, how many people slow down just to see the carnage? You know, they, we all have this propensity to want to see that. And that's what draws our attention. But I think we need to start looking. One of the things I tell people is start noticing with gratitude, all the good things that are happening. Cause there's a lot of great things. There's people out there doing a lot of great work. Yeah. you know, in, in helping people. And it's not all, I mean, it certainly it's bad, you know, yeah. but it's not all gloom and doom. I mean, we yeah. have a, we have an upside and with a virus that as long as you're healthy, mm -hmm. you're going to have a 0.002% mm -hmm. chance of surviving it. It might be yeah. terrible to have it, you know, and, but if you're older, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. I say this every, every, every winter, you mm -hmm. don't want to be out there taking your chances. Yeah. You know, uh, because you're going to be compromised, mm -hmm. you know, so what we have to do is realize that we have a very powerful circulating immune system that can handle most of these things. Mm -hmm. And yet if we do get sick, I mean, 70% of all people who've had COVID are mm -hmm. asymptomatic. They don't even know they have it, yeah. but they have it, you know, yeah. they're carriers, but they don't have the symptoms. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's like, that's not as bad. I think what happened was it's not as bad as people say. Yeah. Uh, because it's not showing up that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> most people are, are getting over it and better. And as long as you keep your immune system up, what, what's interesting is that you mentioned the ocean. One of the favorite things. And one of the reasons we moved to where we are now in Texas is I wanted to be closer to water and the ocean. And because I'm always attracted to the water and I didn't know that it brings a you know, like you said, a meditative state. And, and now I know why we get attracted to certain things. Like my friend loves the mountains. I love the water, the ocean. Um, so, you know, I think naturally as humans, we probably seek out these natural nature things that, that are healthy for us. Yeah. Even ancient cultures, uh, mm -hmm. 
in China and Japan, they call it forest bathing. They now know, science now knows with neurophysiology that we actually get um, histamine responses and we get all these different reactions in our body by going for walks in the woods. You know, it's not just a walk in the woods. Our body actually gets rejuvenated. You know, in, when people say, I love to hike, I, I got to go out there and hike on the weekends because they, they, they got that, they caught that little bit of uh, the help. Now, our bodies are designed still like our, our primitive ancestors. We're supposed to be outside 14 to 18 hours a day. Wow. We're, you know, our, our bodies are literally uh, photo cells mm -hmm. um, absorbing the light from the sun. Every cell has something called chromoforms, which are batteries like, like the charge from the sun or mm -hmm. from light. So if we're not getting those, that's why we have seasonal affective disorder, not in Texas so much, but when you're up north, you know, the, because they don't have enough sunlight. So our, our body and brain has a lot to do with this, the lights on and vibration. So getting out in nature, 90% of all people live within driving distance to a large body of water. Yeah. So they, we, we, it's almost like a homing pigeon. Our bodies know because we would, how long can we live without water? Yeah. I mean, so we're going to be near water. You know, we're going to, somehow our bodies are designed that way, you know, yeah. so we know. You know, it's interesting. Also, Dr. Porter, my, my husband is a pilot. We used to go flying every Saturday and that was also a big recharge. You know, you get up there in the clouds, you, even when it was winter, you get this, the sunlight streaming and even oh, yeah. kind of more strongly than when you're on the ground. And it would just be so re rejuvenating, even though flying could be exhausting mentally, yeah. it would be very spiritually renewing. Yeah. And, and yeah, so it's, it's amazing. You're sharing all this wonderful stuff. Now, how do people get with the Peloton of the brain and get on brain, you know, find out more about brain tap? How do they do that? Well, they could, they could go to our main site, braintap.com, of course, or they can go for 99 cents to, that's the only place they can get the 99 cent deal is braintap.pro. So, because our app is called BrainTap Pro, but mm -hmm. on that site for 99 cents, they can get a copy of my book, Thrive and Overdrive, and they get to keep that and they get 15 days free on the app with that 99 cents. So they can try out everything, I see what it. they think. And they'll notice on social media, we have literally thousands of people that post pictures of themselves using our headset from um, boxing stars, you know, like uh, Corey Anderson, who's a top MMA fighter to... Uh, movie stars are using it. So well, a lot of people um, are using it. How much are the um, headsets to get? The headsets are only $647, uh -huh. but the app can be as little as uh, $10 a month if people want to do that. And uh, do you offer like um, to get started, do you put down the whole $600? How does that work? There is a, there is a payment program if they want to do that. Yeah. You can put down $200 down and pay $50 a month. That's great. That's fabulous. And there's, yeah, I love this because anyone can get started today. Well, I thank you so much, Dr. Porter, for sharing this valuable information. So many stressed people do not need to be stressed and have anxiety. It can change for now going forward. Thank you so much for sharing this great wisdom on Savvy Broadcasting today. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.